So my name is Stefan Thompson, and we're here for the Institute of New Europe in a series of conversations with uh, representatives of members of the three seas countries. Today, we're speaking with Maris Anzans from Latvia. Uh, it's a very exciting, it's a very exciting topic for me. I've actually just come back from Latvia. I was filming in Riga, and then I was filming in Dagafpils. So uh, I have a TV show about. Um, about the former Polish borderlands and Polish influence, a former influence in, in the region. And, and of course, one of the very interesting topics that came up was the Polish involvement in helping the Latvians in pushing back the, uh, the Bolsheviks in 1919, 1920. Uh, so so there's, a, there's a great connection between Poland and Latvia, especially in the current, current context. Maris, maybe we could start with you telling us about you, the, the work you do with the, your center, um, and a little bit of context about yourself before we we dive into the economics of the three C's. Yeah, sure. So you mentioned Poland, by the way, my grand grandmother, she was also a Polish at the time when uh, also, you know, we had a uh, border, in fact, with Poland uh, in the interwar period. So then the sure. interaction communities was quite, uh, quite intense. Uh, so I myself, I worked for the Center uh, for Geopolitical Studies, Riga, as well for Riga's Cornish University. And the first I'm a director, and the second I'm an associate professor. So that's briefly about me. Sure. So the, 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 the discussions that we're, we're having as part of this series is, is about the, the three C's and about cooperation between the three seas countries. Obviously, my questions are coming from a, a point of reference from from Poland. Uh, so there's contextually there's perhaps an overrepresentation in these discussions of obviously the the Polish point of view because of the the bias of the interviewer. For, from your perspective, could you tell me about the three seas and how it's perceived in Latvia? Is it something that people know about? Is this an initiative that is broad support in the country, or, or is it something that that doesn't really exist in the, in the in the Latvian consciousness? Well, uh, I would say that it's uh, virtually unknown uh, in, in the society at large. Of course, it's known quite well by the expert community and of course by the uh, state institutions and politicians, but beyond that, it's, it's virtually unknown. Uh, most probably more and more people have heard about that uh, since Latvia hosted an event this uh, summer, but it's gonna take time. Uh, for this initiative to get more recognition in the society and the 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 expert class and the the political class what what is the 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 general sort of feeling towards the initiative is it is it broadly supportive is it is it cautious is it what is the sort of the the, the feeling that you get well generally it is uh, of course supportive that you know we have to interact more with the, with the other countries uh, in the region, because this would, you know, enhance not only national security but also would enhance the economic cooperation with the, with other states of the European Union uh, to the south. So I think it's it's, it's quite positive the perception. At the same time, uh, well, uh, experts and politicians are not naive uh, because uh, it's it's going to be quite a difficult task, you know, to extend the cooperation beyond Poland. So we are quite close uh, among the Baltic states and Poland because uh, uh, Latvia's top trade uh, partners uh, are Lithuania, Estonia, and also Poland. But when it comes to other countries, so the the, the links are uh, well, so it's less intense. Sure, I, I actually you you predicted the the next question I have because because the the perception obviously is the the Baltic three. There is the sense of the of Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania obviously being a sort of a, a block and a very sort of interconnected space um, that is quite disjointed from the rest. But it's interesting to hear that there is this 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 link with Poland, and the, the, I, I didn't actually know that about Poland being such a large trading partner for uh, for Latvia. But beyond, so so obviously the some of the some of the big key infrastructural projects of the three C's. Um, have a very important setting. The, the, the Baltic countries are, are very key to some of the initiatives of, of joining the, the north with the south, of redressing. In Poland, it's very much presented as redressing. In a sense, something that's kind of in the, in the, in the public sphere is often presented as historic injustices, this sense of 
the infrastructure in the West is the way it is because um, they weren't affected the way we were by obviously uh, communism or, or even the destruction of World War II, where we were much more impacted than others. So there, there is a sense of this is all happening in part because of, of these historic injustices and, and, and we're repairing them. What is the is this something that operates in the in this in the even in the expert field in in Latvia is is there a sense that we are behind uh, our Western EU partners in part because of historic injustices or is this not really something that operates in the public sphere? Well, it's 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 something we're much present in the public uh, space. You know the resentment uh, caused by by the. Soviet Union, you know, because uh, we have lost so many opportunities, of course, lives as well. Uh, so we would have been, uh, you know, in much better state uh, had uh, not the Soviets uh, and the Nazis occupied the Baltic states. But it's, of course, quite difficult, you know, to carry the, uh, turn the history, uh, you know, back, you know, doing justice done uh, by, by the Soviet Union and Nazis. So it's going to take uh, quite some time, uh, and uh, it's, it's also quite difficult to direct uh, the businesses, you know, where businesses operate and which uh, cooperation partners they choose. So in that sense, uh, you know, nobody is naive here. Uh, you know, the, the, the businesses usually naturally uh, find their partners, uh, and uh, this is, you know, not, not as, as the way it was done in the Soviet Union, in centralized economy when, you know, everything was planned what will be produced where at what price uh, what will be sold sure and in, in in terms of in terms of the the economic relations could you could you expand on sort of the the relations that you have as a as what i what i refer to i perhaps incorrectly correct me if i'm wrong of the sort of the baltic block is, is, is that even the, the the right sort of terminology do the baltic three consider themselves to be a bit of a of a sort of a, a block or is that a is or is that part of the sort of the imagination of the baltics from a, an outsider's perspective well we are the, in many ways the the you know, closest countries of course geography matters history uh, you know latvian uh, and lithuanian languages are rather close and you know the societal contacts are also quite intense so definitely baltic states are the most similar uh, you know and, and there's uh, no, no other neighbors are close to each uh, each of us. Uh, so, so we're quite close uh, politically, also economically. At the same time, uh, the Baltic states are sometimes denoted as the uh, beloved enemies because you know when it comes to economics, then uh, the Baltic states tend to compete, uh, and uh, there have been uh, quite some many examples when you know Baltic states have uh, competed, uh, not uh, so to say cooperated among themselves. Could you could you expand on that? That that's very very interesting interesting to hear. What what what, what do you mean by competition? What sort of competition are we talking about? Oh, one interesting example was the liquefied natural gas terminal. Uh, so this is currently a quite a big issue here uh, because the uh, Russian natural gas is not being flowed to the Baltic states anymore. Uh, Latvia forbid uh, Lithuania and Estonia as well uh, the import of the natural gas from uh, Russia. Uh, and uh, uh, around one decade ago, uh, well, a regional LNG terminal was supposed to be constructed in the Baltic states. And the Baltic states were not able uh, to agree on a place uh, where an LNG terminal would be uh, done. So and then uh, Lithuanians uh, constructed uh, their own LNG terminal in Kaipeda. And uh, that was you know, a uh, example when the Baltic states were not able to agree uh, on uh, something. It was quite quite unfortunate. Uh, so we might have been uh, in a bit better position now, uh, you know, with, with the energy uh, crisis. Uh, but uh, it is as it is. So one of one of the things, one of the recurring points that, that comes up, that has come up from other experts I've spoken to, so obviously the, the three C's and at, it, at its core is ultimately one of the key elements of it is infrastructure, and it's these great big uh, transborder uh, infrastructural projects. And one of the, the recurring complaints has been essentially that there is a 
a difficulty even at national level it's difficult to achieve huge infrastructural projects let alone across borders and here let alone ac across in some cases perhaps even up to 12 borders um what sort of has the invasion the russian invasion of ukraine has that has that had an impact on uh the three c's and on pursuing three c's aims especially the infrastructural ones i mean one of the big ones obviously involving the the, the baltic three is is uh is via baltica is is there a kind of a, a renewed sense of energy of of urgency and of purpose is this something that might actually accelerate integration uh yes uh, but not necessarily in the context of the three c's initiative because uh, uh, we have uh well at least two broad blocks of uh, infrastructure. So one is uh, natural gas. Uh, so Estonia, uh, together with Finland, is building LNG terminal. Uh, it should be ready uh, until the winter arrives in, in the region. Uh, also Latvia uh, is is going also to construct an LNG terminal, most probably in Skulta, a bit north from Riga. And also Vipul, uh, a natural gas interconnection was uh, uh, unveiled this year in May uh, between Lithuania and Poland. So natural gas is, is one uh, issue and had not uh, Russia invaded Ukraine, then uh, the new LNG terminals, uh, well, uh, they might have been something of a further future. So, so most probably uh, these decisions uh, were not uh, hastened then. And also Gipol, uh, the natural gas interconnection between Poland and Lithuania most probably would be uh, unveiled a bit later. Uh, the second is uh, transportation or railroad, Rail Baltica, uh, which is the largest infrastructure project uh, in, in, in the last decades in the Baltic states. Uh, so the construction is underway. And so we are a few uh, years from the situation when it will be possible to come uh, from uh, Tallinn to Warsaw by train. So currently it is impossible because we have a different uh, rail uh, gauge here in the Baltic states. Uh, still the uh, Soviet era so-called wide uh, gauge and in Poland you generally use the Eurofit gauge. Although there are uh, you know, also some lines uh, crossing into Poland and, and in fact there is the, uh, also European gauge uh, rail line uh, in, in, inside Lithuania. But uh, still, uh, you know, there's, it, it's, it's impossible basically you know, to train, uh, use a train and to travel uh, across the Baltic states and to reach Poland. So this is going to be a big uh, game changer. It's not only about the economic cooperation, it's also about, about the context between the societies. Because now you need around four hours, you know, to drive from Riga to Tallinn or Riga to Vilnius. Sure. And then the times will be cut uh, to some uh, two or so hours, and, and train is of course also much more comfortable than than uh, with bus. And also, you know, not only the uh, three Baltic states will uh, be brought a bit more closer, but also Poland is going to be uh, a bit nearer. I I actually am very aware that 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 logistical element. So we've been filming the the second season of my show. A lot of it has been filmed in the in the Baltic Three. It's a very long drive from Warsaw. It's like it, it takes a long, a surprisingly long time. But and and this sort of actually bring, brings me on to another. So so this this this. It's funny how these sort of seemingly kind of obviously outside of the expert field, something that seems so banal, like the the width of the width of rails being a massive issue in terms of connecting these capitals. One of the things is, is there's a sense, at least from Poland, that despite us being so close to the Baltic Three, and despite, for example, recently we've been seeing that the Polish president very often alongside Baltic Three leaders, there, there is a sense of politically we're suddenly very close. We're at the forefront of, of the humanitarian effort to help Ukraine. We're at the forefront of, of essentially supporting Ukraine and of, of providing them with weapon deliveries, with political support. Um, and yet... Outside of that political realm, that there is a sense, at least fr from my side, that there's actually a, a great unknown, that we don't really know the Latvians, the Estonians, the, the Lithuanians. What, what is it on the ground in, in, in Latvia? Is there a sense of, obviously, you know each other. I, I have a sense that you do know the, your Estonian neighbours and your, and your Lithuanian neighbours. Is there a sense of you knowing Poland and then the, the broader Three Seas um, region? Or, or is even, for example, something as silly as tourism, where, where 
you, you have countries that are more popular, you know, for, t for tourists and you have a sense, a country has a sense of, well, we might not be neighbors of Spain, but many Polish people go on holiday to Spain. So we have a feeling of some affinity. Could you, could you expand on that on a sort of human level rather than in that expert? Well, we recently le uh, did a national representative survey on the friendliest and uh, least friendliest countries to Latvians. Uh, so in, in the view of Latvian society, and uh, the first was Estonia, uh, second was Lithuania, and the third was Poland. So Poland is, is considered as one of the most uh, friendly uh, countries, uh, according to the uh, Latvian society. And uh, even though, you know, um, uh, there is a bit distance, you know, to, to get to Poland, but uh, Poland is a rather popular destination. Uh, for for uh, Latvians, and not only a destination, but also as a transit country uh, for for Latvians, you know, going to Germany and other countries, those who travel over land. So Poland is is quite well known uh, here uh, in in Latvia. Also, the Polish community is is, is rather uh, significant. Uh, so so Russian uh, Russians, uh, Belarusians, Ukrainians, and then I think uh, Poles uh, uh, come in terms of the uh, ethnicities. In the Latvian uh, population, uh, so so Poland is, is well known. It's also well known that we are on the same page when it comes to uh, foreign and security policy. Uh, there are, of course, uh, differences uh, when it comes to some uh, issues uh, inside the European Union, because uh, because uh, we are quite close when it comes uh, to. to uh, general uh, foreign security policy in terms of NATO, in terms of supporting Ukraine, uh, but uh, we are uh, not completely on the same line uh, when it comes to uh, issues in Poland. I mean, the, the justice uh, sure. system and sure. uh, other, other issues. Um, going, going back to, to but, and going beyond Poland, because obviously the three C's that that's actually a, sort of one of the other things the general sort of lines of of in Poland there is some concern that the three c's are perhaps seen as a sort of um well definitely a polish led initiative because we're obviously the largest country within the 12 three c member states but but there is even some worry that it might be perceived as poland attempting to sort of regain it it's what could be called a rightful place within the region and of rebuilding the sort of Jagiellonian almost um, alliance within Central and Eastern Europe. Is there, is there that fear in, in Latvia of sort of almost a sort of neo-Polish imperialism um, in, in that sense happening and that the, the three C's might be a sort of covert attempt at that or not necessarily? Absolutely not. Uh, as, as I mentioned, Poland is considered as one of the most uh, friendly countries uh, to the Baltic uh, states and especially in, in Latvia. I mentioned the survey results, uh, so there's nothing like that uh, in Latvia. Feeling might be a bit different in Lithuania because of the historical relation between uh, Poland uh, and Lithuania, but not in Latvia. Also, what I did not uh, mention, but I should have, that uh, Polish soldiers uh, also serve in Latvia uh, as part of the Canadian-led uh, battle group. So, so Poland is, is generally uh, seen in a in a positive light here, both uh, in the expert and uh, politicians community, uh, and, and also uh, among members of the society. And and going beyond beyond Poland, so towards towards other member states. What what is the sort of um, the the general? It, it, are there strong links between uh, Latvia and and other three C's member states, from sort of Romania, Bulgaria, Slovakia, Czechia, Hungary, Slovenia, Croatia, Austria, of course. Well, it depends. But uh, as uh, further you go, as the 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 links. Uh, Become uh, less, uh, yeah, so let's say, as, as less we interact with the other countries down the stream, so down the down, down to the south. So, so and business wise, and Sorry? sort of the, the economic, not just necessarily the cultural ties or the or these sort of personal ties, but also just business and, and economics wise. Yes, yes, it's 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 quite uh, quite similar. So as as further down the south as. Uh, the, the cooperation uh, is, is is smaller, uh, you know, between Latvia and other uh, countries. 
and in terms of uh, going back to the to the general sort of economic economic issues at hand, what what are the sort of the the main opportunities that that are seen? So so obviously we have this historic moment of of growth. The the entire region has been growing at an incredible pace. When you travel around Central and Eastern Europe, I mean, it is incredible to see these capitals that will once sort of have this reputation as being sort of grey, dark, sort of post-communist, almost, almost sort of holes, really, being, in fact, these incredible, beautiful capitals. I and mean, Riga is, is absolutely, st- it's an amazing city. And there's an energy, there's a sense of, of things, are, things are going forward. Um, there, there is this sense, I mean, we, we get this definitely, most certainly in Warsaw, of this, this energy and this, this hope, I think, also in an optimism for the future. What what are the sort of the the economic outlooks and the the feelings of of where where are we going as a region, um, especially in the context of what could we describe perhaps as a sort of um, I want to I want to choose my words carefully here, but as a sort of of an almost stagnation in the West of a sense I I, I have a feeling of I I grew up in the UK and I, I spent a lot of time in London and and, and France there is a sense of a sort of a, a stagnation of not necessarily going of not knowing where they're going of there's a plateau that's been reached whereas i i, I get this i get that feeling especially in warsaw especially amongst people my age so sort of the, the that millennial range of people who are in their in their economic prime at the moment of, of we're really going somewhere and I, I wanted to get your feeling especially from a position of an expert i mean i i look at it from the position obviously of just a of a of a of a lay person, it's it, it'd be interesting to hear from from your perspective and and also to get a a, a view from Latvia. So you mean uh, geographically or in uh, another sense, uh, you know, where are we heading uh, towards? Uh, I mean, not 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 geographically, but but economically certainly, and of of what what the future role of our region could be, um, and especially if you, if if there is, if you see an angle that sort of links the three C's, I I think because obviously the the issue with the discussions around the three C's, just to sort of to, to give you more context to the question, is is it's all incredibly theoretical. Ultimately, it, it's a project. It's sort of happening, but not really. There's a sense of some of the infrastructural ha- projects were happening anyway beforehand. That there is, it's all quite vague, right? So it hasn't been quite sure there's some projects that have been outlined 70 something of them but there isn't a it's not necessarily very well defined i i think i don't know if you agree with that or, or yeah, not i do, do i agree uh, but it, uh, of course the initiative it has uh, potential uh and, uh on, the, on the one hand of course it's it's quite difficult to tell businesses you know where uh, should they operate uh, uh, but at the same time of course you know things can be facilitated uh, and uh, the the rail Baltica uh, railroad line is, is definitely you know it has one of the biggest potentials in uh, you know increasing the cooperation uh, not only among Baltic states and Poland but also uh, further down to the south and I think that uh, Poland could play a more active role in in connecting the Baltic states with uh, with the other countries the Three Seas Initiative when it comes to infrastructure. Uh, but um, otherwise, you know, the trade vectors uh, tie us quite closely with the uh, Nordic countries. Uh, so, so for Latvia, Lithuania, uh, Estonia are the closest, uh, you know, partners when it comes to trade. Uh, and uh, Russia is still uh, quite high on the list, but you know, the percentage is quite small. I checked the latest data; it's around six to seven percent. So we are, you know, getting further, further away from Russia. Uh, but at the same time, of course, we have quite close uh, economic cooperation also with Finland, with Sweden, also with Germany, uh, Poland. Uh, and uh, this is uh, going to be the region uh, with, uh, with which we, uh, at least here in Latvia and the Baltic states at large, have the closest economic cooperation. So it's going to be quite difficult, you know, to extend uh, this uh, further to the uh, south and to other um, countries of the three seas initiatives. So, so the potential... Uh, is there, but uh, but we are uh, tied quite much, uh, you know, uh, here in the Nordic Baltic region. And what what could be done? So, so sort of from a f- what what could be done? That there's it's very interesting what you said in 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 the sense of of needing Poland of Poland essentially being that that key, essentially being a a sort of an, a key to that lock in in a way. 
because obviously it is the country that sort of blocks you from, I mean, blocks you, that stands in the way. I mean, it's the bordering country. <laughs> that sounded terrible. Um, but it's the country that sort of is there just just sort of guarding that, that border. So it, it sort of cuts you off in a sense. So you, essentially, that's the key to to having that integration and furthering that, furthering that integration. What could you, what could be done from a sort of a, a, a broad idea of, of what steps could we take um, as Poland uh, to in, ensure that it all goes as smoothly as possible, even also in terms of, of, of perhaps of not just regulation, not just political will. Obviously, there's the economic factor of money needs to be found to finance all of these projects. But um, but also from a, from a communications perspective, if you could break down the sort of elements that are required to turn these dreams and the hopes into into reality along those those vectors that are outlined, and perhaps additional ones if there if there are any. Well, uh, Poland is definitely not blocking anything. It is indeed, as you put it, it's it's the key. It's it's the key. You know, without Poland, you know, this initiative uh, cannot succeed. And I think Poland has done already quite much. Uh, so, so Poland has facilitated, uh, you know, this cooperation format has been also instrumental in, in getting uh, the United States uh, behind uh, this endeavor. And, uh, you know, Poland uh, should, should continue its, its efforts. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be quite difficult, as, as I told you, I think, on multiple occasions, because it's, you know, when it comes to business, you know, in, in uh, liberal democracies, so, so business, uh, Will always find uh, its way uh, on it itself. Of course, you know the governments can help with the infrastructure. So Poland should definitely be uh, active and even more active with Rail Baltica, try to extend it, you know, further to the south and to the west. Uh, of course, you can do uh, business forums and you know connect uh, businesses. But uh, otherwise, there is, uh, I'm afraid, not that uh, much what uh, you know one uh, state or more states can do. Sure. And a final, a final question. Obviously, you're, a, you're. A, I, I, th I think I'm generally quite an enthusiastic person, perhaps, maybe overly so. But is there? I, I, I sort of. I know I've asked this question. I've, I've iterated it multiple ways. Are you, are you generally optimistic about the initiative, about the region, about despite obviously the the geopolitical context and and potentially of a of a of a global recession around the corner? Are you? What is your sort of sense of? I know this isn't really a. It's more a sense of a sort of gut feeling. I I I'm I'm very keen on getting people's gut feelings. I I think gut feelings tend tend to have some ingrained sense of truth. So I'm quite keen to see if you're sort of quite optimistic or not necessarily. And and if so, why why or why not? Well, I'm optimistic about the northern tip of the three seas initiative, Baltic states in Poland. But I'm uh, quite cautious uh, about uh, the, the rest because, uh, you know, I'm not speaking uh, about the initiatives as a whole because uh, the, there must be also on a, other uh, so the projects and sub-initiatives that might connect, you know, the, the other countries, the Three Seas Initiative. But uh, I, I see quite, uh, quite a bright future for the Baltic states and, and Poland. You know, I think the cooperation is is is, is gonna you know grow further. You know, Poland is uh, is one of the power centers of Europe. It has already one of the strongest um, armed forces, and 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 uh, Poland is, is seen as instrumental uh, here uh, in, in Latvia and the Baltic states uh, for security defense of the Baltic states, and uh, also as the key uh, to the uh, uh, rest of Europe when it comes to uh, overland connections. Excellent. Maris, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, and thanks for that, that bright, optimistic ending. That's, I think, exactly what we need to hear in these dark times. Thank you. Thank you.